Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Blog, and today we have another comic book breakdown discussion video, and this time on separation anxiety. So I know we've been covering this trade paperback, which you can go buy at your local comic store. You can get them to order it for you. You can find it on Amazon if you're not near a local comic shop, uh, but definitely support local comic businesses if you're near one. And this book has, I think, a total of 16 comics in it. It's like four four issue stories. And we talked about the mace already with our friend Joe, I think in episode 91. And then after that, we talked about uh, Knights of Vengeance and then Exile Returns with Venom vs. Scarlet Spider and uh, setting up Scream and all that stuff. And basically the ending of Knights of Vengeance, the storyline of Exile Returns, and here, Separation Anxiety, these are all kind of like a little trilogy. So the Mace was like a bonus story that they put in there just to, you know, have them all in order. Uh, but really, this is the main part of the book. It's this little three-part story where in Knights of Vengeance, at the end, Venom is like, oh, because this is all taking place before Planet of the Symbiotes. So it's kind of Eddie Brock and Venom going, oh, there's more life forms like us out there and yes that's true because there's carnage that we spawned and then there's the other five life foundation symbiotes that we spawned uh, but there could be more out in space you know still alive uh, because the symbiote doesn't know it's been you know exiled to battle world which is where spider-man found it so it doesn't really know uh, about uh, if there's anything surviving out there that is Cl of the Clintar race uh, which is what the symbiote is is from a, the planet known as Clintar so uh, so that set up at the end of Knights of Vengeance into the reason why Eddie returns to New York. He, he kind of comes back, but in a weird way, he can, he's like, all right, I'm going to come back to kill Carnage. But we're like, okay, but why? Like, <laughs> I guess Carnage had broke out around that time in the comics and Spider-Man fought him. And so Eddie, you know, Eddie's like, you know, I'm going to come back and kill him and maybe find out more about other symbiotes. And then when Scream showed up, she was like, hey, we, I need you. I, I need to ask you questions. Venom wanted to kill her. And so you're like, all right, so what does he want? Does he want to know about other symbiotes or does he want to kill them? It, he's like so inconsistent. And I know Eddie's, uh, you know, not all there, you know, basically. He's a little bit crazy and the symbiote may be driving him a little crazy at times. But still, uh, it's very inconsistent uh, at times. When you look at the stories as a, a three-part story, uh, it's very he's very inconsistently written. And in this one, it's no exception. I like this book overall, uh, but Eddie acts very erratic and, uh, and kind of like out of character sometimes in this storyline uh and then sometimes in character very in character uh, but in separation anxiety this is the last four issues of this graphic novel that you can go buy now uh or you can buy the digital issues you know individually on comiXology i believe and in this story it's it's basically what the title says separation anxiety it's it's the symbiote at the end of exile returns the jury and the guardsmen they took the symbiote to a, a location in upstate new york and they locked it up there and they took Eddie Brock and they brought him to a facility in New Mexico and they locked him up there. And so this is them away from each other and the anxiety it builds in both of them to want to rebond because they both get something from each other. And uh, and so, you know, their, their goal, obviously, in this four issue series is to reunite. And what they do in the middle of it is they throw, and by the way, I'm looking down at my, my Kindle. I have my Kindle fire here with uh, the digital copies of this book on it. And, uh, and you know what they add to this story is the five symbiotes from the life foundation come back because obviously we haven't seen them other than scream and the exile returns we haven't seen the other ones uh riot phage lasher and agony we haven't seen them uh at any time since the lethal protector miniseries so this is uh you know the writers and howard mackey and uh, ron randall i believe is the artist uh and howard mackey wrote it this is them trying to you know, tie up that thread of these five symbiotes. So that's, this is the crux of the story, is Eddie and his symbiote trying to get back to each other and then dealing with the five symbiotes in in the middle of all this. And uh, a lot, one another character that they added in was Ken Ellis, the reporter who named the Scarlet Spider the Scarlet Spider. He was there, obviously, when Scarlet Spider defeated Venom, so he decides to do some investigative journalism, goes undercover, and uh, kind of sneaks into the Life Foundation, gets a fake badge and everything, and uh, gets in there and... and poses as one of Eddie Brock's, uh, one of the symbiote's doctors, I guess. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He, he, yeah, does he go to New Mexico? Yeah, he goes to New Mexico and he finds Eddie Brock. So I thought he went to upstate New York for the symbiote. But yeah, I'm flipping through the pages here. Yeah, Ken Ellis goes down and talks to Eddie Brock. And he's basically like, all right, I'm going to get the story. I'm going to find out what's going on here and, uh, and, 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 you know, do a follow up to my, you know, Venom defeated by Scarlet Spider story and see how he's being treated here and see if there's another story I can tell. And that's what he's doing in this. So he's kind of has that mission of being a, a journalist and being, you know, uh, around the story. 
And so I think Howard Mackey had like an affinity for this character. I think I think he co-created Ken Ellis, the character, and I really wanted to add someone out there in the universe that was like an everyman, but also uh, someone who, uh, you know, could get into the thick of things for, you know, a specific reason, which is obviously wanting to get the story. So he's kind of like a Lois Lane, throwing himself in a danger all the time. And uh, so, you know, the symbiote is starting to act strange. It's in New York, uh, upstate New York, and it's uh, the doctors that are around it studying it. It starts to shapeshift. It's, you know, cre creating Eddie Brock's face, Peter Parker's face, even the doctor's faces. And they're like, well, who are these faces he's making? Like, and uh, what's going on? Why is it acting this way? And uh, and the, so they're studying it big time. Meanwhile, Eddie is being pretty much tortured in a lot of ways and uh, not treated very well. He's locked up in a tube. People are kind of studying him because he still has a connection to the symbiote. So there's still something to learn there and they're exchanging this information with the New York branch. Uh, and then, like I said, Ken Ellis comes in and uh, and gets caught, actually, and causes a stir. But then right as he's, you know, about to get you know arrested or whatever, uh, a woman shows up and her outfit comes to life and tur she turns into Scream. So it's Donna Diego walking up to the facility and turning into Scream, basically. And her and the five symbiotes bust in and grab Eddie Brock and Ken Ellis since he's there. And, and Ken Ellis is like, hey, I'm a doctor. Like, uh, you know, if you're going to take Eddie Brock, take me with you. Obviously, she's doing this to get into the story. But then Scream looks at him and she goes, yeah, I remember you. You were there when the Scarlet Spider beat Venom. I know who you are, you know, Ken Ellis. So, yeah, we're going to take you, but as a hostage in case anyone comes after us because we need Eddie Brock for a very specific reason. And the whole reason they captured Eddie Brock is because, just like Scream said in the Exile Return story, she wants to know how to control their symbiotes. Uh, there's something going on. The symbiotes are starting to lash out. Uh, the human hosts are losing control of them, and it's making them rage out and, you know, and kill people. And they, she doesn't want to kill people. She doesn't want to lose her mind to this alien symbiote. So she's asking Eddie, like, tell us how to, you know, control it. And the whole book, Eddie's just acting like a total a-hole. He will not tell them anything. He won't to share with them the bond he has with his symbiote. He hates them. He keeps saying he's going to kill them. He even tries to kill a couple of them. And you're like, it, it's so... He's so erratic, uh, and, and for no real reason I can feel. I know the character doesn't like these you know, other symbiotes. I know it brings back memories of the Life Foundation, but they don't really touch on any of that. He just acts out and just lashes out at them just like a, like a spoiled brat for no reason at all, and he's, and he's screaming at them, trying to kill them. And then what ends up happening is they, they are being killed one by one. The five symbiotes start getting killed, starting with Agony. He's the first one to die. And, uh, or she, she's the first one to die, and they're all getting picked off one by one, and you're like, what's going on? And then, you know, you know, Phage and the others, and basically what's killing them is uh, there's a sonic knife, uh, I guess, that they created, and uh, once it stabs into someone, it renders the symbiote useless temporarily, but it goes right through the symbiote and kills the host and sends a, you know, vib vibra like a vibration uh, signal through them that shuts down the symbiote, it completely kills the host, and uh, and separates the connection between host and symbiote. Uh, so these things can drop now in an instant because agony gets killed, and then more and more start to die. And the storyline, there was really not much to tell actually after that because that's pretty much the pr premise, the setup, and the execution. And then in the end, you find out that uh, Scream is actually the killer, the person who has been trying to rationalize with Eddie Brock for, throughout this story and the four issues of Exile Returns, turns out she's the killer. So it, it, that also didn't really make a lot of sense. And she says, "Look, there's evil in all of us, and it just and the symbiotes bring out evil. So sim therefore, my conclusion is symbiotes are evil and they need to die. So I'm going to kill. You know, I killed my other four compatriots, and now I'm going to kill you, and then I'm going to kill Carnage, and then kill myself." And it really comes out of nowhere. I mean, when I'm reading this book, I'm like, all right, if this is interesting and I'm kind of pulled in, I like the Ken Ellis stuff and, and the him being on the run with Eddie Brock is kind of a neat, you know, uh, thing because they don't have any powers and they're, you know, they could be killed at any second and the symbiotes keep trying to capture them and then threatening to kill them. But they're like, no, we need to find out how to control them. And then turns out Scream didn't even want control anyway. She was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm killing all of the symbiotes now. And it's like, okay, well, that was what Venom we was kind of doing in Exile Returns, so why didn't you guys just team up in that book and go kill the other symbiotes together and then go off and find answers, you know, about the Clintar race together or something? I don't know. It doesn't really make a lot of sense uh, on that level, but uh, still fun. Uh, the artwork's pretty good. Ron Randall's uh, art's pretty good. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. The main thing is his angles. He had some interesting shots in this book that I thought added a lot to the storyline, so it wasn't just, like, the story wasn't the only thing that pulled me in, even though his art style is not 
typically like you know like I, he doesn't have a style that like really draws you in he's not like really dynamic or anything but he does make interesting art choices and that kind of kept me invested in the storyline uh but yeah overall like at the end you know obviously the symbiote breaks out in new york it makes its way so while eddie and and ken ellis are on the run together the symbiote they're trying to get closer to the symbiote uh because they found out it's in new york and the symbiote is on its way to eddie brock and it's jumping host to host and uh, and and you know trying to do good and you know like one person's getting mugged the symbiote wraps around them and they you know kill the mugger and then the symbiote leaves the you know the victim and leaves them you know behind or whatever and i was like oh that's pretty interesting that'd be cool to see a storyline where all the hosts that the symbiote you know bonded to temporarily if there's a storyline later in the comics or, or nowadays in the comics where they touch on that you know and, and and those people are suffering some kind of like separation anxiety of their own maybe or some kind of ptsd or or trauma of getting alien you know memories in their head or something that would be a cool story i think to tell one day uh donny cates if you're watching maybe that's something you could write in the venom book um but yeah uh, but at the end of this book you know venom and the symbiote and eddie brock reunite and then Eddie easily dispatches of uh, of Scream and takes her down. And then I believe uh, this she still sticks around later in the comics. I can't remember. Or maybe she dies in this one. I think he stabs her and she dies in this one. Uh, and then uh, the symbiotes, the other four symbiotes, once they're, um, I guess, brought back or whatever, or like they're separated from their host, there's a storyline we'll talk about later maybe uh, called Hybrid where those four symbiotes that were killed by Scream all merge into one uh, symbiote called Hybrid and becomes like a superhero, anti-hero kind of character. We may or may not talk about that story when we get there, uh, but uh, just know that that does happen. And Scream, I think, is dead for good. I don't think she ever comes back in the comics, at least not to my recollection, but if I'm wrong about that, let me know down below. And I'm sure as we're rereading all these stories, some of these that I forgot about, uh, we will probably touch on her again at some point. Uh, we'll definitely talk about these suits because after they become hybrid, they separate again and they show up in a Carnage miniseries that we'll talk about in the near future too, which is really cool. So yeah, overall, okay. I mean, the book, this was all right. I think the peak of this graphic novel is definitely Exile Returns. That's the best part of this graphic novel. But this isn't a totally bad ending either, and it does pay off a lot of the setup from Ends of Knights of, uh, Knights of Vengeance and into Exile Returns. This is a nice payoff to some of those story threads and stuff, uh, all written by Howard Mackey. So yeah. Pretty cool. So definitely go pick up this book out there, uh, the graphic novel Separation Anxiety. We'll have all four of these stories in it, and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy them. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And before we leave, actually, I do want to give a quick mention to the video game. Uh, there was actually a Venom Spider-Man, uh, it was called Venom slash Spider-Man or Spider-Man slash Venom Separation Anxiety. And it was a video game that was named after this storyline, but really didn't have much to do with it. Uh, it. It more followed Lethal Protector of all things. And I, so I don't know why they didn't just call the game Lethal Protector. And the game wasn't very fun. It was like a beat em up kind of game, uh, like Streets of Rage kind of in a way. It was very repetitive, very boring. Uh, the storyline was okay, but it really just followed Lethal Protector. So if you just went and read Lethal Protector and you just wanted the story, then that was a better way to do it the game was severely overpriced uh for what you got i feel uh, and i think some other reviewers had said that before too i think i remember some of the reviews being like yeah it's okay it's just not worth like the price you pay for it if it was like a 20 or 30 dollar game you'd you know be happy but like a 40 50 dollar game didn't seem to make sense uh, it was a short game too and uh and the storyline it had like the the giant mechs from uh, lethal protector in it had the underground city in san francisco uh was set in san francisco which obviously separation anxiety is not and the five symbiotes do show up throughout the game but the main villain is carnage in the game uh and it's you know and then like captain america and daredevil and ghost rider even show up as like temporary help and aid uh during some of the fights like you can summon them to come in and do something to help wipe uh you know enemies off the stage so yeah i just wanted to give it a just a mention because i know some some of you guys might be like hey you know they made a video game about this it's like yeah i know i played it it was on sega genesis and the super nintendo i think i had it for the super nintendo though and i don't remember liking it at all it was not as fun as maximum carnage was uh at least as far as i remember so uh yeah i just wanted to give that a shout out too so you guys let me know what you think of all this down below as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace